Glad you could join me today. I wanted to announce today that I did it. I finally transitioned to indoor riding for this year. The fall is upon us and it was time to make the move indoors, sadly. I like warm weather, I don't like cold weather, so it's always a sad time for me to transition to indoor training. However, because of technology today, in particular for bike riding, that transition is not as difficult or as painful as it used to be. Today I wanted to show you what my wife and I's setup looks like for our indoor riding in hopes that if you're looking to start riding indoors, if you're wanting to engage in that, or if you're looking to upgrade your indoor setup, or if you're just looking for ideas for indoor riding, Hopefully this video will help you out. I want to start off by maybe going through some of the equipment that, that we have here. First of all is our Smart Trainer. We use the Kicker Snap, Wahoo Kicker Snap. Smart Trainer, it's a friction, a friction trainer. And so it is not a, it, it's wheel on. It's not, you don't you know, put your bike on the trainer where the trainer has the gears. It's a wheel on trainer that uses friction. You'll notice here that I do not have uh, friction trainer wheels on yet. I'll put those on next week. These are actually my road tires. So I don't have those on yet, but I'll put them on next week. Ridden a few times indoors so far with just my road tires. But if you don't know, you need to switch those out to training tires because these friction trainers will wear out your road tire. Some people get an extra rim and they just swap the rims out. Some people just change the tires out. That's what I do. It's the end of the season, so I'm not riding outdoor anyway. So I'll take the, my road tire off, I'll put the training tire on, and then I'll put my road tire back on in the spring. I also have a Wahoo Element Bolt, and I'll explain why I use that for indoor training, as well as a cadence, a Wahoo cadence sensor, a Wahoo speed sensor, which are the same sensors I use outdoors when I'm riding outdoors. I also have on my particular lane here, where my bike's at, I have an Apple TV, I have a 55 inch TV, and I have two Honeywell fans that are pointed to my chest and my face area. I found these fans at Walmart, they're about $14.50, I think they're like the 802s or 806s, something like that. There's three speeds to them. I have them on the second speed. There's still another speed to go. There are plenty of fan. You don't have to buy the bigger fans. These are awesome. And then I also did a remote control power so you can turn them on and off by a remote. They sell those at hardware stores or Walmart or whatever it may be. You just plug them into the wall, plug your fans into that. I use a power power extension power cord and plug all my fans into that plug it into um, the unit into the wall and then that makes it remote control I don't start out with the fans on but I certainly turn them on after a while I don't necessarily like cold air blowing on me when I'm not warmed up yet so I like to turn them on a little bit later and I know my wife would prefer to turn them on a little bit later as well so uh, that is a great addition Wahoo sells a fan, I can't remember what it's called, but it will blow wind under certain situations. I, I chose just to, just to go with this. Those things are expensive, so I chose just to go this route. That's my setup. My wife, she uses the same thing except for instead of an Apple TV, she uses her laptop. The reason I wanted to bring that up and highlight that along with my bike computer is due to Bluetooth limitations. Bluetooth <clears throat> allows two sensors or a sensor and a trainer, two Bluetooth items to be hooked up at one time. It cannot do more than two items. So if you have your app, uh, your app up and you're trying to connect uh, your heart sensor and your trainer and your cadence sensor uh, via Bluetooth, you're not going to be able to do it. It'll only take two. There is a couple workarounds, or there are a couple workarounds for that. 
One of those is that you can buy a dongle that hooks into your computer via USB. That dongle is an amp dongle, and a lot of people use an extension cord like three feet to get it closer to the sensors on their bikes um, because there are issues with those little dongles kicking in and out. Even with those cords, they still can kick in and out a little bit. I chose to do something a little bit different, and I think a lot more stable than that. And that's the second option that I'm aware of. And that is use your bike computer. I use the Wahoo Element Bolt, and the Wahoo Element Bolt allows me to use it in passive mode. So that means that my app can be running. It'll be pulling information off of the trainer, the smart trainer. It'll be pulling information off of the heart sensor, displaying it up there on the screen. But my Wahoo Bolt in passive mode will also show me the information from the trainer, like on the screen, the watts and the speed, and my heart rate sensor, beats per minute. Plus, it will also show me, because it's using amps, my cadence sensor and my speed sensor. So it works the same as if I'm out riding on the street, with the exception of I obviously wouldn't have the kick or snap connected because I wouldn't be going anywhere if I did. So when I'm looking at the screen, I see the information from my kick or snap, which is watts, wattage output, speed, and heart rate or beats per minute. When I look down, I see my Wahoo Element Bolt, and it is showing me my trainer information, which is my watts, my speed. It's also showing me the heart sensor, and it's showing me my cadence, my revolutions per minute, or, yeah, and it's also showing me my speed sensor, how fast I'm going with, with the speed sensor, although you don't need to have that speed sensor hooked up because you're going to get it from your kicker snap. Uh, it uses AMP technology, so I can have the Bluetooth ones show up on screen, and then via AMP I show them on my computer. I have no connection issues. It works really, really seamlessly. It's no different than when you're out there riding and you're using your bike computer, you're looking up at the road, then you look at your bike computer, you look up at the road and your bike computer. It's really no different. Cadence to me is one of the most important things when I'm riding because I use it to tell me when to shift. And maybe this is wrong, but this is, this is how I use it and how I find it the most effective. I roll at about 98 revolutions per minute. I know there is some talk out there in different studies. Some say you should have a slower cadence. Some say you should have a faster cadence. I don't really care what cadence you use. For me in particular, I personally choose to use 98. It's what I like. It works for me and it's where I keep things at. And I think I get the best out of my training at about 98. So that's what I use. If you use a different cadence, great. You do you. Do whatever works for you. My wife, she's at a slower cadence. That's, that's great. That works for her. Um, find the cadence that works for you and stick with that. And then I use that cadence to tell me when to shift, when I'm going up grade or downgrade and shifting up or shifting down. I really keep that at 98 or do my best to keep that at 98 if the grade gets really high obviously my my cadence drops down but um, I do the best I can to keep that at 98 you'll notice I ride a TT bike so I don't do a lot of hill climbing it's mostly sprint type stuff because I train for triathlons or duathlons and so that's the kind of riding that I do on the road so I like my cadence to sit at about 98 maybe if I was hill climbing that would that would be different and I would have to look at a different cadence for that. So, to summarize the equipment, we use a Wahoo kicker snap. And again, if you, if you do buy these and I do like them, make sure you get a training tire for them because they will wear out your good road tires. I use an element bolt, which is connected to my Wahoo cadence sensor it can be connected to my Wahoo speed sensor, but I get that information from my kicker snap, my smart trainer. So it shows me watts and speed and RPM, and it also connects to my heart sensor. 
so I get my beats per minute as well on my computer. And then my trainer and my heart sensor are connected up to the TV, so I see that when I'm looking at the TV. I want to take a minute and discuss the app that we use. Matter of fact, I was talking to a friend the other day. Uh, he's a hardcore rider, and he, he's saying, oh, you've you got to use Trainer Road because, you know, that's really going to help you speed up and, and it's really for training and, and stuff like that. And, and that's great for him and the type of riding that, that he does. And if that works for you, Trainer Road, that's awesome. You know, Trainer Road, Zwift, Sufferfest, Ruby, and there's some others out there. They do give you free trials. So I encourage you to figure out what works best for you. I think, I think you need to look at, at what you want to get out of the training and what type of training you want to do. And each app is a little bit different in how it approaches things. So you'll need to figure out what works best for you. For us, Ruby um, is amazing. So how it works is it's the actual video of the actual course. And when you're pedaling, the video moves based off how fast you're pedaling. If you stop pedaling, the video will stop. If you speed up, the video will go faster. So it's the actual speed um, that you're riding will reflect in how fast that video goes. And again, it's, a, it's a actual real video, real footage of the ride or the course that you're on. The other thing with that is, is when the incline actually happens on the course, it will be reflected in your smart trainer and the resistance will get stronger if you're going up or, or easier if you're going downhill. But it happens at the right time based off of the actual course. So if you're training for a ride on a certain course, say you're going to do the Ironman, the Kona Ironman. If you're going to, if you're going to ride that, I really recommend you get on Ruby and ride the course and train on that actual course. And that will help you when you get there and actually do the triathlon. So I think they have, I can't remember if it's 2,000 or 4,000 courses around the world that you can ride this way. And they call it their new AR system, augmented reality, I believe it is. So you have real video footage and then uh, the riders and like the finish lines and the starting lines and midway points, you know, your kilometer markers or whatever they want to put there is via virtual reality where they add in characters or starting lines, whatnot, but they add it into the real video. So to me, this is the most realistic you can get without being immersed outdoors. My wife and I like that. It keeps us engaged. We enjoy riding that way. And I would say that the best app isn't this isn't trainer road because it's more for intense training or Zwift because of its social media um, applications or Sufferfest, you know, because of its type of training. I think the best app is the one that you'll enjoy using the most, the one that will help encourage you to get on your bike, to ride, and, and, and to get the miles in. I think that's the best app. And for my wife and I, Ruby is that best app. So I encourage you to try those out, see what you think. And you might even start with one and say, this isn't really what I'm looking for, and then switch to another one, whatever you want to do. But we enjoy it. My wife and I can ride actually on the same course. We can ride side by side. We don't have to be worried about how fast the other person's going. You just ride your ride and, and you do your thing. So we really enjoy Ruby. We recommend it. The second thing with Ruby is the pricing for Ruby is, is amazing, especially if, if there's two people, like my wife and I. Zwift, I think, is 15 bucks a month per person. Sufferfest, I think, is about the same price. And Trainer Road, I think, is now 20 bucks a month per person. Whereas Ruby is, I believe, around $13. But you only have to have one paid account. Both of you have to have an account. But you only have to have one paid account because it's like the family plan. So both of you get to ride off of that one payment. So if we were using Zwift or Sufferfest, it would be $30 a month. If we were using Trainer Road, it would be $40 a month. If Because we use Ruby, it's only 
13 bucks or 14 bucks a month. I can't remember exactly what it is. So the pricing structure is a lot better, a lot more friendly on Rui. And then I know like if you're running and training for triathlons or duathlons or whatnot, you can also hook up smart um, uh, treadmills to some of these programs. Ruby has running now. You can switch from cycling to running down there in the bottom. They are getting ready to launch compatible smart um, treadmills and pods that you can put on your feet like stride pods that you can put on your shoes. They're uh, just about ready to launch that and then you can run I believe the same courses even and maybe they'll even be adding more. I know Zwift has ones you can run on but again Zwift is a virtuality, virtual reality game social media sort of thing which kind of doesn't do much for me personally but it's a great app. Anyway that is what we have that's our setup we're enjoying it and hopefully this video has helped you out, um, especially if you're looking to ride indoors. Appreciate you watching. Man, get out there or get in your room, start riding, and then put on the miles and enjoy the ride. Thanks.